Please, 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 I can't breathe. We start with developing news from the United States. It's in relation to the death of the unarmed black man, George Floyd. The murder of George Floyd. I can't breathe. Now the former officer we witnessed with his knee on George Floyd's neck. 13 days after the killing of George Floyd. Plus d'une semaine après la mort par asphyxie de George Floyd. The killing of an unarmed black man, George Floyd, while he was being restrained by police. Please, man. I'm not going to shoot Please. you. Step on face away. I'm going to get out of here, man. Into the death that set off protests around the world. Tens of thousands of people have demonstrated in an eighth night in cities across the U.S. Our nation has been gripped by professional anarchists, violent mobs, arsonists, looters, criminals, rioters. We don't have time to rest. What do we want? What do we want? New York's finest have been hit in the face with bricks. President Trump has been criticized by some for telling state governors to take a much tougher line with the protesters. These are acts of domestic terror. These demonstrators turn to racial injustice in their own communities. Now these are scenes not of an American city, but of Montreal. We can ensure that Ireland is an anti-racist country. From America across the world, to New Zealand, to Rome, to Nairobi, and now here in London. are now coming out in the public sphere. It's, a, it's an, and the denial of racism at the institutional and systemic level. That can't be denied anymore because we all saw the murder of George Floyd live. If anything, the policy in this country about more racist. Derogatory and divisive remarks about our appearance. The statue of Winston Churchill, who is a national hero, has had to be boarded up. Uh, for fear of violent attack. We, we just came out and we're still within the last part of a pandemic, but racism has been an endemic pandemic for all of black people's lives. Does the Home Secretary recognise that there's structural inequality, discrimination and racism in our country? We're still trying to do the same evidence and the same proving that racism exists at the systemic level. Most, most of us are here through a pressure. We should look sometimes at the positive stuff. Because if we stop moving, if we stop speaking and protesting and talking, nothing will change and we, we need change now more than ever. Racism has a way of giving you trauma. And we need to talk about racial trauma. <laughs> investigations, when will the Prime Minister finally apologise for his derogatory and racist remarks? And in the inner cities, where youngsters must have a decent education if they are to have a better future, that opportunity is all too often snatched from them by hard left education authorities and extremist teachers. And children who need to be able to count and multiply are learning anti-racist mathematics, whatever that may be. Was there a moment when you realised <coughs> that your skin colour not only was going to affect you in, in your social life, but in your career, was did you realise that you were going to have to work harder? Well, my parents always said to me, uh, and this is the way I think a lot of the um, 
our generation were brought up that you had to be three times better uh, than the average um, English or white person. So that was instilled in, in me at a very early age that you had to be better. Anything you did, you had to be twice as good, three times as good. In, in, in my experience, I've, I've found that I've had to work really, you know, quite hard, doubly as hard. But my, one of the things my mother used to be really scared of is us walking, going out beyond the, 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 sort of the confines, for want of a better ex, uh, word, um, of, of where we lived because she was afraid of us being picked up um, by the police or being beaten up, for instance. So, um, and that has sort of stayed with me today because I felt that venturing out beyond, you know, into Abingdon or areas like that, I, was, I, I quite, felt quite exposed. Um, so, yeah, I think definitely there's been an element of, 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 of lack of confidence um, through being black. Growing up, I was like the only black girl like in my school, like in primary school or secondary school. You know you're like in competition, but you don't really understand why. And like, you know, people are intimidated by you, but you don't really understand why. And it's just like, I'm really approachable. I'm literally five foot two. Like what it's about me that is really so intimidating. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what I found as a, a young lad, I was being stopped frequently. Um, the police would be quite abusive hoping that you react and <clears throat> believe it or not you know the police would call you names the same racist names of you walk you nigger you know I'll chuck you in the back of the van I'll give you a kick you know, things like that everything that they're picking on is like literally like because you're black do you know what I mean like this guy that I don't even really know tried to fight me on a night out when I was like 18 he's like three years older than us he literally like he called me a fat black bitch tried to like actually like try and hit me then like two years later like he punched me in the face do you know what I mean so like all of those situations kind of like escalating and it's quite worrying at the birth of my f um first son um or after the birth I went out, to, uh, being out on a night out to celebrate to wet the baby's head um, and coming back I was you know, a little bit worse for wear but I, I was coming going home and um, I was attacked set upon by four I think it was four or five white people and beaten up um, so that has stayed with me um, for most of my life so yeah so I've, I've sort of tried to blend in um not forgetting my identity but also um in order to make things a lot a lot easier so sometimes i don't i don't even go out um or i'll catch a taxi back rather than walking you know walking home so. do you feel safe going to the police in an instant like that do you feel like you can pick up the phone do i literally it doesn't even cross my mind because like what are they actually going to do like i've had incidences with the police before obviously and they just don't care and i think like once you kind of like hit that point it's very hard to kind of be like like how do you escalate the situation do you know what i mean i've never really thought about it like that but like i just wouldn't go to the police for anything yeah. like especially now I, no I, I i didn't um i just felt that I, I felt you got more of a response from when we were burgled than i ever had with the police um so i'm i'm not as confident in that as and and, and also it's just been well, proven there's an issue about systemic racism in in the police forces and there um in the met in particular i i joined the met police force in 1992 and one of the reasons i joined was not necessarily because i had it in mind to become a police officer it's because i wanted a challenge and my experiences of the police from a young lad is sort of something that drove me into because I thought what's the biggest challenge as a black person I thought there it is we talk about institutional racism okay it's in the police I can tell you that I was 
if the police really want to be serious about you know, eradicating the racism and the behaviour of their officers, they have to introduce proper disciplinary procedures because the disciplinary procedures at the moment is it, it's it's not adequate um, for the, the 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 type of responsibilities that police officers have. I don't think there's a section of this country that is not like exposed to some sort of prejudice and like even with misogyny misogyny against black women is different anyway so like that's always going to be a thing there's always like an umbrella and things underneath it so like i genuinely don't think there is a section of the uk that is not infiltrated by racism somehow england lays claim to the fact that it was res it, it helped abolish abolish slavery so it's backed it but it did, you know, it profited from, from slavery. Um, so it, 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 it's in a sense, the system is, 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 is designed or appears to be designed um, around slavery. And that to me hasn't changed. Um, but I'm not a thought, an authority on it. But when I hear somebody like Boris Johnson, who's an, you know, comes from the elite, making comments that he has, has made and refusing to acknowledge, he's quite flippant and dismissive. That um, that does make me very, it makes me frustrated and, and, and quite sad because, you know, we were invited over here. My parents came over, or my grandparents came over on the, um, you know, to help this country. Not forcibly, we were asked to come over um, or enticed. I literally don't think anything's going to change until, like, this country overthrows the government and I'm being so serious. Like, you can't vote your way out of this. Like, and that goes for literally anything because we don't really have a choice. Like, it's, there's no lesser of two evils. It's literally just two, like, it's just evils, you know what I mean? I've never felt safe with, 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 with the Conservatives. And I, I think that um, the Conservative Party, they personify the, the establishment. Um, and the establishment is linked to um, royalty, the royal family. This country was built, and, and how this country has been built on, um, in terms of you know from slavery, and everything. So I think the Conservatives represent that. I commend the people that are like doing this work every day and like trying to get justice for those people. Do you get know what I mean? Because like in a country of sixty-six million, like realistically, stuff like this like shouldn't be happening. But because it's seen in such a like small scale, like compared to America. It doesn't get the attention it deserves, I think. I do believe that being black and British is a problem because if, if, if you look around us, to be black and British, it's all well and good if you're representing the organ you know, the country. So we look at sports people, for instance, um, you know, if you're, if you're Raheem Sterling, sprinters, athletes, and so on, that the British, um, as long as they're doing something and contributing visually, I think. And then, but then there's the other element of being black and British is, is, is a crime associated with, with um, being black and British um, and how that, that sort of, this, you know, is stigmatised. So, you know, and there's also a confidence issue as well. Um, and that could be in the, you know, in the workplace, how you see yourself, how others view you. I think, um... For me, although I'd say black, British, I can't say I'm proud because of the acceptance within the society for being, you know, calling yourself black and British. You're not really accepted as British. I could never really feel um, comfortable with calling myself black, British. And it's mainly because of the uh, systemic racism which exists within the society here. <laughs> I don't think you could uh, confidently uh, say that you are accepted as black British even if you call yourself that. Sheet. Sheet.
All my life been the black keys True, I never really was a bad breed Daddy probably rolled for me an athlete Man, that nigga move like a taxi All my life in the backseat You talk about life, is it that sweet? All these eyes staring at me I've been feeling real low, nigga, low-key How I break heart, feeling so weak Tattoos on my passport, no sleep This is what you ask for, don't weep Don't whinge, man, I'm here and I won't leave All I wanna do, make songs, blow trees Wanna be honest with myself if I don't speak So I make the point to address him, man, you know me Got me believing in Buddha, the more I proceed Oh, this life isn't guaranteed All my life felt a cold breeze In and out, but staying up and never down You hearing me now? Give me some time and a little space I'll figure it out, they wanna know my whereabouts And who I'm around, been in one enough of time Trying to find a way out, you can hear it in my rhymes I'll be thinking aloud, I'ma be ghost for a minute Don't get in your feelings, I ain't even wrote for a minute Not a single lyric, man, I got a life That is crazy, most cannot live it, see I'm trying to sabotage me Got me fucking living all my life In the black sheep, all my life In the black keys, true I never really Was a bad breed Daddy probably wrong for me, I'm Man, I need to move like a taxi, y'all. Oh, my life in the backseat, y'all.